Welcome to Toyol Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler and I'm going to do something I've never done before. Last week I had a real Kandinsky moment, Russian artist, 19th and 20th century artist, who a lot of people think uh, pretty much started modern art. Uh, one day in his studio he was working on a landscape, and, well he put the landscape up and he was working on another painting and he looked back and he had put the landscape up upside down and he felt like for the first time he was really seeing art instead of it looking like something he was really analyzing it as what it really was just colors and lines and textures so my Kandinsky moment was I was working on one of these YouTubes and I looked down to my paper towel and I was just getting such interesting interesting textures and colors with the way the the uh, paint was going in as I as I cleaned my brush and it was picking up the pattern in the, the paper towel and also doing some other interesting things. So this time I'm actually going to work on a paper towel and just see what happens. So I'm just going to see. I'm sure the colors are going to bleed a whole lot, much more than a porous piece of paper. And it's going to probably going to look like a floral or something. I'm not really going to worry about making it into what artists call pure art, which is what a lot of what Kandinsky did, where it's just what it looks like rather than looking like something. <laughs> so you either like it or you don't like it, but you can't relate to things you like to see. Okay, actually I think I need to use more water. I was thinking it's going to bleed a lot more than this. Surprise it's not. And there are certain things I always like to say and I know I'm repeating myself, but you never know. There, I don't know if there's different people watching, but I use really inexpensive materials for these most of these YouTube paintings, and they're not for sale because it's such cheap stuff. But you can get great archival prints if you're interested. Well, this is not bleeding nearly as much as I thought it was going to be bleeding all over the place. And it is, but not as much as I thought. And I'm not so sure it's really picking up that pattern as much as I thought it would, too. But, you know, you never know. As I said, with these YouTubes, I like to really, really just have some fun with it. Not all my artists like that. I'm working on a Blue Ridge one of Wintergreen. It's a beautiful resort. Saw an incredible sunset there one time when my husband, son, and I were vacationing there. And I've never, never forgotten that. I did get a file of it, but I never uh, really just worked just from my photographs. I am perfectly capable of reproducing a photograph, but uh, I always put myself into it, and photographs never, as far as I'm concerned, really pick it up anyway. But there was this light effect that was just really amazing as it hit a house that was on the ridge, and then the shadow was so blue-green around it that I wanted to capture that in a painting. It was a beautiful sunset effect with really rose-colored light. And so for that one, yeah, I'm sticking a little more to what I was seeing and trying to capture a certain effect. But with a lot of these YouTube ones, I'm just really just playing. Well, this is not what I thought was going to happen at all. I thought it would bleed so much more. But I thought it would be really interesting to do something completely different. Uh, I don't know. I have my hair dryer here. I might go back into it again and see if it bleeds again. But this is not what I expected to happen. It's not what I saw either. <laughs> not what I saw when I had my Kandinsky moment. But it's, it's coming along in a pretty nice what we call non-objective or non-figurative painting. I think it's interesting to look at. But um, just expected a much different effect that isn't happening. And I'm not really, it's not really turning into one of my suggestions paintings. If you've followed my work, you know, sometimes I just throw the paint around and see if something comes up and then I go with it. I don't, I'm not really seeing anything in it either. So this is disappointing. It really is. I thought I was going to really get something very intricate and very different. And although I don't hate it or anything, it's not what I expect it to be at all. 
Oh well. It's certainly not awful. But I really expected to pick up that pattern more, and that's not what happened at all. The paint is, of course, bleeding, but um, the pattern isn't really picking up. So I might just go back into it and just kind of follow those sections with a small brush, a very small brush, and see what happens. I don't know if anything will or not. I don't know if I should have used more water or what, but um, really not getting what I thought I'd be getting. So I go back in to those sections and pull them out a little bit, but I'm kind of forcing it. But, oh well, why not? So I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to steal the designer's pattern or anything, but I uh, just wanted to use it in this painting. And I'm not really getting that, so I'm going to kind of bring it out anyway. Well, this is nice. The good thing is the really good thing is that it's still wet enough that it's still bleeding into it. So that's great. I can hardly find them now. Because um, either I used too much paint, not enough water, but they kind of disappeared. Uh, I am starting to get it back a little bit, and now it's looking a lot more interesting to me. I always like my artwork to be very, very complex. Um, I don't like artwork that just has a few shapes and all. Uh, minimalism, which was real popular in the 70s, where you got a couple shapes and that's about it. That's just not for me. Um, I do like to work in all levels, though. This probably is going to be just turn out to be a, a non-objective or non-figurative painting. Mostly prefer to try to capture the incredible beauty in this gorgeous mountain region that I live in. That's the most important thing to me. And it can't really be caught. I know I said this ad nauseum, but light is always changing. And it's just not anything you can really capture, as Monet said, but you can get what he said, naive impression. If you've watched these, you've heard me say that a lot of times, but uh, it, it is really frustrating to me that a lot of people think you can really capture what is out there, and you really can't. Not with a camera either. You can't get the intensity of light with a camera, but you can get a great shadow, and it is certainly a wonderful art form. Well, <laughs> ah, not what I expected. I'm kind of just going with it the way I would a non-objective painting and just kind of reacting to the colors and letting things happen, but not what I expected to happen. I really thought that that pattern would come out so strongly and then I could just work with it. Could be that I just didn't use enough water. Uh, maybe I should have used a bigger brush. But I'm starting to get some nice areas into it. Um, there's certain areas I'm not real crazy about. I think I'll get a bigger brush and work on those. And then I think I'm just going to say, it was an interesting idea. Not that it's not, I don't think it's bad art or anything, but uh, it's not what I expected at all. These two shapes through here are kind of bugging me. I don't think they fit in very well. I don't know, that may sound really strange. I really think you have to work with art, really do what we do to start to understand that, which is why I had my students at Radford University do that. So I'm not going to be able to explain this unless I make them do it. And I did. Over the whole semester, I went through all the decisions, the decision-making process that goes in any kind of artwork. doesn't matter where it looks just like something that you see, or it is this. It's still a matter of a lot of decisions of an arrangement by an artist. And if you start doing that, if you start getting involved in what artists do, you'll start to see that, trust me. You may work on drawing skills, which is very important, but eventually you're going to start to see it as, an, as a creation, as an arrangement. I don't think it has enough pink. And I think it would be really nice to get some more pink in this particular composition. I just don't like the way that's blotched right through there. Now that it's getting a more of a circular pattern, I think it's much more interesting. I think they just kind of stopped those two blotches right through here. And I think I need to extend them out more and get a circular go a circular pattern going. So I think artists know that really works really well when you are designing the space or the composition as circles really help. 
because it makes your eye go around and around and keep getting involved in the space. Well, I must say I'm starting to really like it. It's not what I expected to get at all, but I'm starting to like it. That's what's really great is the paper towel is still is still taking the water. So now I am starting to see a few things. <laughs> starting to see, you know, flowers. I've noticed when I do suggestions paintings, lots of times you start to see flowers. Um, lots of times fish, <laughs> birds, lots of these things just tend to show up. Well, even though not what I wanted, I actually am starting to like it. And I'm real pleased it just keeps on bleeding. So I'm going to work a little more and add a few more colors and textures. The um, Usually artists have what we call a focal point. Not always, but usually they have what we call a focal point. Everything else supports that area. And I think there's a focal point right through here where you can see kind of an abstract flower or floral or something here right through there. And the rest of it is supporting it. And I do like the way at least that shape right there really did come out. That's part of the uh, paper towel design. So that was nice. I might be getting to the point where I don't want to do much more. That's always, I think I said this in the last one, that's always a common complaint that artists have is you can get it to a really complex state and then you decide to change it a lot and then, oh God, wish I had what I had before. So it's always a, it's always a real experience of um, trial and error. And I do say that about my representational work, the way things look pretty much, because uh, I put myself into them and I do um, elaborate on certain colors and textures and develop patterns that happen as I, I work. If I knew exactly what I was doing every time, it would be boring. I'm always learning, always changing in all levels of my artwork. I can cry. I'm just so pleased the way it keeps bleeding. <laughs> that is the one good thing. Because if I were using paper, even if it was uh, heavy rag content paper, which means there's linen in with the paper, I, it wouldn't be it wouldn't stay be bleeding this long, I don't think. So I'm gonna push that a little bit more, put a few more little dots so I can get some contrast and size, and then I'm going to say the end, and I really do like it. So that was nice because I really thought it's gonna not turn out very well at all since I had such a completely different idea. I'm starting to think I'm overdoing it with the yellow a little bit. One thing I learned when I studied art, did my thesis that I didn't know, is that Claude Monet, who's considered to be incredible at just seeing color and presenting it to us as much as he could before the light changed, he had a problem with his uh, sight as he got older and he wasn't able to see yellow very well. So he did a lot of paintings that were just loaded with yellow because he couldn't see it very well. And when he, he was actually able to get his vision corrected again, and he asked his family, why didn't you tell me I was putting all this yellow in these paintings? I guess they thought that's what he meant to do. Okay, maybe just a little change through here. No, don't like that. Get that back in. I like the green better. And then I'm just going to say, it was an interesting experience. And I hope that you will check it out on my website. As I said, once it flattens out, because it's, it's buckling all over the place, it will make for really beautiful prints. It's just that I uh, certainly wouldn't sell a piece of a paper towel to anyone, or cheap paper or anything else. I've um, also been doing some Skyline Beauty paintings, if you've been following me. And yeah, those are, on, those are good paint and good and on canvas. They are certainly, the originals are available for sale. Well, I can't think of anything else I really want to do, except for maybe a tiny bit more red. See if it's going to keep bleeding, I hope. I don't know. Yeah, it's still bleeding a little bit. Just a little more red through here, I think. And I'm going to quit because I'm getting to the point now where I really think it's, it's very nice and I'm going to lose it if I keep going over these areas and then I'm going to say, oh, I wish I had it the way I had it. Art is a really fascinating experience. Love it. Live to paint but can't take them with me, so I work hard to promote it and sell it. Don't think I'm going to go back into that one after the camera's off. So what you're seeing 
pretty much. I have to alter the colors because it never comes out exactly right on the camera or YouTube. What you're seeing is pretty much the way it's going to be. It will be available for prints. And of course, there are other links in the description to my artwork. Thank you for watching.